Today I've got over 15 tiered tray ideas for you for fall and Halloween. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. These little things come from the Dollar Tree. They are so cute. I knew I had to have one. I just wasn't quite sure what to do with them until I saw it in person and then I thought, yep, this is going to be a little planter pot. So he's perfect. Be sure you check yours and make sure it's not broken before you leave the store. I just have a foam ball here. Use a square, use whatever you have as long as it fits. I'm gonna add some hot glue on it so it won't move around. I have hot bush from the Dollar Tree. I have a thrifted pick and then I have some maple garland from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna dismantle my maple garland, pull off all of these little pieces because we are going to transform this one garland into several leaf picks. So here's the stem where I cut my hot bush off. I cut those off halfway so that they would be short. Now I'm gonna take the remainder of those and cut those off to use as picks to go in our leaves. So nothing is wasted here, isn't that perfect? You can use a dot of glue if you need to, to hold these in place. I did on a few of these, but most of them fit nicely on the stem so they won't slide around. So simple. And you get a whole lot of picks for just the price, I guess, of $2. Okay, so you're going to push those in and place them around. Now you know with your arrangements, be sure that you are following some type of a pattern. You want to put your greenery um, down first. This is a short squatty arrangement, so I'm going to place these down and to not completely cover his face, I want to leave a little opening there. And I'm kind of following a pattern you want to do somewhat triangle, so there's one, two, three, our hot bush is in a triangle. I'm going to add here, so there's a triangle on the top as well. Then I'm going to add in some more of those where it makes sense to me. Here are the little berries from that garland. I'm using those too, and I'm just going to fluff those out. Okay, now moving on to this. I only had one of these picks. I'm going to take it apart because it was really too big for the project anyway. Pull all those pieces off. They don't have little openings on the end where you can push a pick through them. So I'm going to show you an alternative way to make picks out of these. Take one or two of these, put them together, line them up on another piece of that wire that you have, of the, uh, the pick wire. And then start twisting and pulling on the floral tape. When you pull a floral, the floral tape, that's what makes it start to stick. It's waxy. It's not sticky like a regular tape, so don't be misled by that. Put a little bit of pressure on that and twist it. Then when you pull the end loose, it will stick to itself, and it makes the perfect little pick. It's dark green. You can get these um, floral tapes in a variety of colors, but it matches what I'm doing and you can't see anyhow down on the inside of this little short squatty arrangement. So I'm just gonna place these around where they're not too close to one another so they're spread out and that the color green is spread through here. I think these colors are perfect for a cottagey feel. What do you think? Okay, so I have a couple of little pieces left that were broken and I'm just gonna go in and add those in here. And by broken, I mean they were, I didn't have enough picks for them and some of them had a little bit of damage on the stem and they needed a little bit of extra love. So I just fixed them up and now I'm going to glue those in. Okay, so here's the base of a pick. We're gonna cut all that randomness off the top. I'm gonna use this little fall piece that I took off of a pumpkin that I did earlier and I'm going to add that right on there I'm trying to put it in a place where it's not so obvious that there's a big green pick behind it clean up any extra glue before it dries and then I'm going to press that down into there and it's really not even going to be noticeable oh my goodness the cuteness what do you think I'm having all kinds of Dollar Tree cuteness with these projects. Welcome Love back them. everybody. 
Today we're going to be using these little photo prop picks and a thrifted pumpkin and some houses from Dollar Tree and some scrapbook paper or crafting paper or wrapping paper, whatever you have, and then a piece of this cork adhesive paper that's in the background. It's a scrap I have left. And those paper pads are on clearance at Joann's right now for 97 cents. This came from Dollar Tree. I used it on a previous project and had a little left. Gonna need your glue gun, your scissors, glue stick from Dollar Tree. And if you see there in the right corner, that is my daughter crafting with me. She likes to get her craft on while I'm crafting, so that's her design up there. We're going to remove the backs. You can just press with your thumbs and those will pretty much pop out. Sometimes the paper comes out easily, sometimes it sticks. But if you have any on the edges, you can take a regular nail file, got this from Dollar Tree, and just file that down. And the pieces should come off fairly easily. And if you don't mind them on there, you can just leave them on. So we have three houses of three different sizes and I'm just fitting in my photo props to see what's gonna work the best. Those were really easy to pull off the picks too. Now I'm looking at my paper to decide what background is gonna look the best for the colors that we have. Okay, so see there's some remnants of the old paper, but we don't care about that. It's gonna be covered, not a problem. I'm gonna turn it over and measure. And remember, part of the frame is going to cover some of the edges, so I'm just moving this down a little bit to allow for the width of the frame, just to make sure that I have enough paper to cover everything and there's no gaps. So I'm cutting right to the inside of my lines. And just using a glue stick that came from Dollar Tree. Came in a multi-pack with the school supplies, by the way. I think there were eight in a pack, so it's a really good deal. Just gonna put that down and use my handy dandy ruler to make it lay nice and flat. So here I am doing the same thing on one of the other houses. And you'll see the gaps on the side, but that won't matter because the frame will cover it. Okay, so the cork adhesive sheet is going to be a little bit different because it has a little thickness that the paper does not have. So we want to allow for that so that the frame can seat down nicely around the cork. And it will pretty much be sitting back in its original position against the backing. So the frame will sit flush against the backing. So to allow for that, I'm going to cut maybe a eighth quarter of an inch, something like that to the inside, just about the width of whatever the frame width is. And I'm just kind of estimating. So I'm cutting it there and I'm also gonna cut it on the other side, but you don't see that in the clip. I'm gonna center it, peel off this little plastic paper backing and just center it onto the back. And then there is a little gap there because I estimated. So I'm just gonna use this in a few minutes and trim it up on the inside. Using the hot glue, I'm going around the edges here and replacing the backs. And it looks kind of like faux shiplap. So it's a nice farmhouse look. By the way, the music I chose is because this is kind of coffee shop music and I thought it would be appropriate for our pumpkin spice cup up there. Okay, so see there's a space there. You're gonna just put your glue there, fit the frame back on top. And here are my little rubber fingertips. These keep your fingers safe, keep you from getting burned. They came from the Dollar Tree in a three pack. So I've gone around my edges and just made that flush against the edges and it looks fine. And here are my three houses. And these are the items that are gonna go in each one. So I'm gonna take the pumpkin spice cup and I have some of these foam 
I don't know, dimensional stickers. They're by 3M, but you can get something like this at Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna layer them because I want them to have on them to stand up off of the background. So I'm gonna layer two. Two on the top, two on the bottom, and that's gonna give it a little depth when you put it into the frame. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing to my pumpkin topiary or pumpkin tower, whatever that is over there. And press him firmly down in the frame too. Okay, the pumpkin, the Happy Harvest pumpkin over there is one that I thrifted. And if you'll know, if you'll see in one of my first two videos, I actually made that one over. Um, so I'm gonna use it now. I'm gonna use a little Gorilla Glue so that it stays for a long time and I'm going to use hot glue for a quick fix. Because I don't know that this is something that I'll ever redo. I really like this particular craft. Never say never. Okay, so you're gonna take a pick of your choice. This came from Dollar Tree. And just, you can put some leaves in this or around it. You can use the berries, which is what I'm going to use. And just cut it into pieces. and use it as an accent wherever you wish. I'm gonna add a little to the corner where my pumpkin spice and everything nice cup is. And you can see I've already put some on the Happy Harvest pumpkin up there. And then this is some thrifted raffia. You can use the hula skirts from Dollar Tree if you like, but I went ahead and used this. All I did was just tie one of the little strings of it around the center to hold it together and give it a, a place to hold the glue and hold in place. did it there for the pumpkins as well and this one I'm going to do the same way and with a little tie in the middle but rather than gluing it straight onto the bottom I've done it sort of at an angle you can just trim that up wherever you want to or need to or you can leave it kind of hanging wild And so here the three are together, and I'm just going to add a couple more berries along here and there to complete my look. You can do this any way you want with any type of picks. If you want to do neutral colors, you can do neutral colors. You can paint the facing of those frames, or you can paint the entire box if you want to. You can do it any which way you like. I hope you're enjoying these fall videos. Uh, if you do, please give it a thumbs up and comment below if there's anything in particular you would like to see me make. I've had some input about doing more projects with the, thifty, the thrifted items that I have, so I'm working on that as well. And again, thank you so much for your support and subscribing and sharing. I'll see you again soon. Bye. I'm going to start off with just some florals and some things that I think I might want to use and just a folder. It's a metallic um, big cat print. It's leopard or cheetah, whichever one. I'm going to take this little pumpkin from Dollar Tree, pull that off. And I think I'm going to use the side with the print on it, cover that up and I'll still have the back as a plain color. So I'm just going to take this folder. You can use paper, construction paper, you can use um, crafting paper, wrapping paper, whatever you want with whatever print. Since this is on trend, I thought we would give this one a shot. I 
I cut a little bit to the inside of the line to make sure that I get a good fit on the front. And I'm just gonna fold down that lip there from the folder and cut that off. Okay, so because I don't want my edges or the sides where I might have missed it a little bit, I don't want it to show, so I've got my choice of two brown paints here. I'll have those colors in the description box for you below. So I've decided on the lighter one, matches a little bit better. I'm gonna go ahead and get my favorite paintbrush. And I don't need to waste paint, so I'm just gonna go around the edges here so it won't show if I made a miscut. And then all around just the edge, um, the edges of the pumpkin on the sides. I did do two coats of these and I used a hair dryer to help facilitate the drying process. But you can just set it aside and make sure that you let it dry before you go any further. Trying to be careful to leave that back solid orange because at some point I might want to do a little something different on the back side. All right, we're back and it's all dry and you can see that it dried a little bit darker. And then I'm going to take my glue gun with my Gorilla Glue Sticks and go around the edges, but not so close that it squishes out. We want it to have a nice finished look. So I'm just applying that all there. One strip down the middle. You know me by now, I like to take things apart and repurpose them so I don't wanna have a mess to have to tear off at some point later. Okay, so I thought maybe I would try these. This color combination I thought would look nice, but eh, I really could not get, I, I, I couldn't do it. I'm just a rustic kind of girl and I just felt like this needed a more rustic look. I mean, they're wild animals for God's sake. So we want to make this look more safari-like or more woodsy or jungle-like. So I've taken a Dollar Tree leaf and then a scrap leaf that I already had. I trimmed that, the one that's already down, I trimmed it up a little bit. And then I'm just gonna trim this one up as well into two leaves. And I have decided that I want to make a, a little tendril that comes off the pumpkins, the little twirlies. So I'm just taking a piece of this wire jute from Dollar Tree, wrapping it around my pen, and then I'll slide that off. And it just takes a little hot glue on the ends and twist it back so that it stays down if it starts to come unraveled on you, which I have already done. And I'm going to glue that to stem. Now I gotta get the right placement for these leaves. You can do it any way you want to. If you want to stand it up and put them on the top sides, you can do that however you want to do it. All right, so I want to make sure it didn't come off of my paper. I added some more glue to it and I'm just gonna layer in some more leaves. I did find one more leaf that I wanted to put in there in the back and it came off of Dollar Tree floral. So I'll just be adding that in too. I'm not sure what happened with the lighting there, but I'm working on it. So there you have it. And there's our completed pumpkin. It is our leopard or a cheetah print, wild cat, big cat decor. Just adding this little bow back on there because it needed a little extra love. I'd love for you to subscribe, like this video, and comment down below if you would like to see more. We're going to start off with one of these little banks from the Dollar Tree. One of these little pumpkin containers. And a little metal sign here. 
Plus, I'm going to be using a pumpkin that came from Dollar Tree last year that I've already DIY'd. Okay, so here are our transfer stickers. I found four. I was so excited. I hope you can find them. We're going to start off with a little bank. It's got gold glitter on the outside. I'm going to open it, peel out that paper, it comes off really easy, and then take some fingernail polish remover and take the writing right off of it. Really got to get a, a good amount on that tissue to get it to come off. You can use a knife and scrape it off if you would rather. Now you just take any type of scrapbook paper that you have. I happen to have some of these little pads that originally came from Target. And I'm going to tear off just a white piece that is embossed with stripes. In order to get the right size, I'm going to flip the backing down onto the top of it and just trace it with my pencil and cut it out. It doesn't have to be perfect because when you put the back on, you'll have nice crisp edges. I'm going to use my glue stick. I ran out of the purple school glue sticks. Got to get some more while they're still on sale. And then go over that, flip my paper over. I'm just choosing which side I want to use and then pressing it down. I'm using a wallpaper tool to just flatten it out a little. I don't want to press too hard because I don't want to press the um, dimension out. Now I've chosen to use this grateful, thankful, and blessed decal for this one. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I know I use that word a lot. I'm just kind of getting an idea of what the center would be. Now you got to hold it still so that it doesn't slide around and start pressing it down. Now, I want to let you know that it took a lot of elbow grease to get this one on this embossed paper. I edited a lot of that out, but I finally ended up having better luck using the back of my little spatula over there, pressing it down. Take your time when you do it. Okay, so now I'm going to, see there, giving it a little check and it looks good. I'm going to take some of this pumpkin scented pine cones. They smell delicious. Not like cinnamon, but more like a fall scented candle. I'm going to open this little bag. This did come from the Dollar Tree. And I've decided I want to make this like a shaker. So I'm going to take my little pieces out. There's tiny pine cones and little pieces that look like pumpkins in there. And I'm just going to put those around in the bottom. I'm not just emptying the bag because I don't want all those little pine seeds to go flying all over the place. They get static electricity and they make a mess in there. So you see one of those little seeds fell out. I don't want a bunch of that. I want it to look nice, neat, and high-end. So I'm placing those around in there. Yep, they fit. I even have a couple of extra pieces for another project. I'm going to put my back on. Just press it down. See, no need for a perfect cut there. And this is what it looks like so far. I did put the little slot for, our, for where you put the money in. I put that on the bottom. Now we're going to use the same tag that came from that little bag. We're just going to cut that little orange strip off and recycle it. And it's going to cover up the hole in the bottom. Use a little hot glue and just put that right down. Now you don't have to worry about it looking unfinished. If anybody lifts it up and wants to shake it, there you go. I'm going to do a little more to this project, but I'm liking it so far. What do you think? Okay. So here is some little lace ribbon that came from Dollar Tree. I tried a couple of different bows for this, but finally decided on this one. You're just going to measure about three inches down, two and a half maybe, and flip it over on itself that, so that when you finish your loops, you have two loops on each side. So two here and two here. You'll need to tie it or use some type of wire or it's so tiny I wouldn't suggest a zip tie. I wouldn't waste it on that. Or uh, you can use scraps of jute. That's what I do. I save all my little hangers off of previous projects and I put them in a jar and then when I need them I just pull them out. Plus I have a spool, a big spool of jute that I use in my projects. So now I'm just cutting this off. This is going to be the bow and then we'll add a separate tail to it. I'm just kind of twisting it around there to make sure that everything is where I need it to be. And then you're just going to take another, I think this is about eight inches approximately, and we're going to make a tail with that. 
Just gonna add some hot glue. I trimmed off the extra jute. I'm gonna make it sort of like a V there. And then glue it down. Protect your fingers. I didn't do it right then. I was in a rush, but protect your fingers. They are precious. Okay, so now I'm just cutting off that little piece that was left on the inside. Use whatever type of bow that you like. I thought this was cute for this project. This is like a rustic glam kind of project. What do you think? It's got the little lace, so it's and it's got the glitter and it's gold, so it's kind of glamorous, but it's very rustic with the, the pieces that we put on the inside. So trim your edges. You can dovetail, do whatever you want. I find with these thin ribbons, it's easier for me to just cut them at a slant. And they still look finished and nice, I think. I don't want these tails to be flopping around, so I am just going to glue them down on the edge of the frame. Just like this. And this is almost done. I'm gonna take one more of those little mini pine cones, put it right in the middle of my bow. You can put it to the side, you can use a leaf, you can put one of your little pumpkins there if you wanted to. Whatever you choose. Pine sight, I should have picked up some more bags of that. It's really nice to work with. Glues down nicely and it's the pine cones are in great condition. They're not shredded at all. Okay, so this is how it looks when it is complete. Isn't that cute? And it all settles back down in the bottom and it smells amazing. Okay, so the next project, we're gonna use this little container. I don't know what this is actually. It's too small to be a napkin holder, but you'll see how I use it. I've got an idea for it. So I'm gonna lay it down on a piece of paper, trace it out, and I've just chosen some yellow plaid or yellow checked. It's kind of at an angle though. But it's really pretty. It came out of another one of those little packs that I've had for a couple of years. Um, originally from Target. You should know if I say I got something from Target, then it came from Dirt Cheap because that their overstock goes there and I buy it when it's very, very cheap. Righty, so if I can keep it in my hand, we're gonna use some glue again. Really simple, this just dries and is less messy um, in my experience than Mod Podge. I do like Mod Podge on other projects though, but just for this and for time's sake, we're going to use a little glue. Okay, so I'm just using that tool again and I'm just going to press it down, make sure there's no bubbles, and we want to have a nice, smooth, finished look. Like maybe it came from the manufacturer this way. I always strive for a high end look. Okay, so I'm going to take my little foam sanding block, also from Dollar Tree, and just go around my edges to make sure that I have a nice, clean edge and it's going to shear off all the little extras. Now to choose which sticker I want to use for this. I think we'll use this one. Pumpkin spice and everything nice. So cute. I'm going to trim it off so that I can even it up and get it flush where I want it on the bottom. And that looks good. Now without moving your hand, you got to hold it down. You want to just kind of burnish this down. You really want to work on it. And again, I grabbed this tool knowing that I wouldn't have good results. So I do end up going to my spatula, really putting some elbow grease in it. And then you want to do this very slowly. Peel it up very slowly so you don't pull anything off and make a mess. And this is what it looks like so far. I am loving these transfers. They are amazing. So of course, I want my little gingham ribbon to be on this pumpkin. I'm mixing my patterns, y'all. Mixing my patterns. I don't mind it with this though, because one is so small and the other's larger. It doesn't bother me at all. I have an aunt who used to say that things would make her dizzy if they were too busy. So hopefully this doesn't bother you if it does just use a solid color ribbon. This is just mine, you make yours your own. That's what it's all about. Okay, so I'm just gonna glue that right on the stem on the top. Isn't she cute? All right, now I've decided that since the little bottom hasn't been painted or finished here, I'm gonna finish it with some ribbon. Some other suggestions, you could use the furniture repair markers, you could use a little bit of paint, you can use a permanent marker to go around your edges if you would like to finish it off. 
but I think this ribbon looks really cute. What do you think? How would you have done this? And the great thing about this particular project is that we're gonna give it two sides. So instead of the four projects in this video, there's actually gonna be five. So you get an extra. We're gonna have a bonus. Okay, continuing all the way around. So we get back to our original spot and then I'm just gonna trim that off neatly. And there we go. And I think that that is really going to be nice. Now, I really love this print when I was looking through here. I think I'm gonna try this on the back. So here we go again, same process. We're gonna trace it out. We're gonna cut it out. Take our glue stick, put it all over here. Don't worry about those little cutouts. You are not gonna even know they were there. Take that pumpkin, place it down, rub it on there. Then you're gonna sand it down. Same, same thing. Just such a quick project. I'm gonna take some of this Dollar Tree ribbon and I'm going to make another bow exactly the same as the other bow. But this one, I'm gonna place a little bit lower down on the pumpkin instead of putting it up there high on the stem. It's gonna be kind of under the stem. Y'all should know this bow by now, little bunny ear bow. Simple little shoelace or bunny ear bow. Very easy. And it's great for these projects, especially if you like rustic and farmhouse. Simple projects, you know, simple looks. See, this one's gonna be a little bit under. So rather than a hair bow, it's a bow tie. How about that? Okay, now, if you wanna add a little something extra, you can choose some um, seed pods, you can choose some leaves, you can choose some pretty flowers. I'm just showing you how you could do it. This is how I'm going to leave mine, just like this. No extras, I think it looks good just like this. And this is how I'm gonna use it. These are my craft supplies. I'm gonna put them on my crafting table and just add a couple of tools that I use regularly. Look at that, isn't that cute? You can make this as a gift for someone too. Give a fellow crafter a gift and put them some tools in one of these. I think they would love it. Follow me on my social media, Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Glad to see you there. Okay, so here we go with the next one. This is a little metal house from Dollar Tree. And we're gonna fix her up. I'm just using my pumpkin for the last project. I'm putting it under there just to support it while I am working on it. It's a very highly reflective service. So I wanna be sure I can see what I'm doing. The camera lights will give a glare, as you can see there to the right. And my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. So I've chosen this Hello Autumn to go on my house, trimmed it down, gonna pull the backing off, place it down carefully where I want it to be, and then hold it down. And then this time I'm using a different tool. This is a little wooden tool. I do not know what this is. If you do, let me know. I got it at Goodwill. I thought it was cute and I thought it could be used for this exact thing. So after it is put down, you can just peel this up. And I will tell you that using it on the metal seemed to work better for me than any other way. It worked quicker. It's stuck down better, in other words. So here's some options for you. You could trim it out with a little bit of ribbon on the bottom, on the top, if you would like. You can use some of these pumpkins, just, you know, cut them in half, stick them on there. You could use some pine cones, but I'm gonna put a little wreath on there and I'm gonna make my own wreath with some of this rope. So I'm gonna fold it over. I know how, uh, how big I want it to be because I measured on the top, kind of looked at it. I'm gonna squeeze it together. I'm gonna hold it there for a minute now. I edited that part out so you wouldn't be bored. Then I'm gonna use my cutters and just cut off the excess at a slant. So when I add some hot glue, I can roll it down on itself to make a nice circle. So I'm just adding that to the little ends before they fray, using my finger protectors. These came with my Monvic glue, glue gun. Okay, so there you go. And then I'm going to find its placement on the top. 
And I think I want to add a little ribbon and a flower to this. Same bow, y'all. Same process. I hope I'm not boring y'all with this, but it's the same process. I wanted these videos, this particular video and these projects, to be on the simple side. And y'all, these would be great on a tear tray. If you have ones that have a lot of space between the layers, I think these would be so precious, even on a coffee, coffee bar or something like that because they're small, you know, they would look great in a china cabinet, layer it up with some dishes underneath, some white dishes, It'd be so pretty. How would you use these smaller projects? Where would you put them in your decor? Okay, gonna use a little hot glue so that I can put it down on my little house. And remember, metal gets very hot with hot glue, so just be careful. All right, and I'm gonna add my little bow to the top. Now I can put the flower down and I think I'm gonna put it in the middle. Yep, she's right there in the middle. So there you go, that one is complete. Next project, I'm just getting another piece of paper to go with my happy fall, y'all. And I think I like this one. I'm gonna trace it. You can see I had already done a project on that pumpkin before. And I'm recycling it. I'm going to cut this one out. Same thing. Once I get the right size, I'm going to glue it down. Same thing. Hey, if y'all want to show me some love, you can buy me a coffee. See the description box below for the link. Thank you. Okay, y'all. So we're pressing it down and we're going to take our sounding block and we're going to sand away all those little edges. This is going to make it nice and crisp. I had already painted my edges, so you can go ahead and do yours if you would like. Now for placement, I think I'm going to slide it down like this so it's in the part of the pattern that is not quite so busy. It will stand out just a little bit more. So right here will work. Okay, now I'm holding it down again. Always keep one hand on there. And then I'm just rubbing this on really firmly. And there you go. This is how this one is going to look. I'm going to take some of this wire jute and we're going to make a little tendril for the top, a little curly, pumpkin curly. This is one I had in the past and I'm going to use it again on here. I've done these in other videos um, so you can see how that you do those. A little hot glue around the stem which by the way I did sand also. It was brown and I sanded it to make it look a little more rustic. Then I'm gonna press that down in there and just kind of work with that tendril a little bit, a little vine. And I'm gonna use one of these leaves. It came from the thrift store. Put it right on top. I think that color, that wine color looks great with that. What do you think? That is so simple. What you're gonna need are a brown and a copper spray paint and an apple juice bottle. This one has leaves on it, so I thought it would be cute. So we have brown and metallic copper, and I'll put the links in the bottom. I actually chose to use, instead of the copper spray paint, I've chosen to use the copper paint. So I've already turned the bottle upside down and gave it a good spray of the brown, and you can see that it's kind of flecked heavier in some areas than others. You can kind of see the light shining through it, and I've not put any on the top particularly on the top part of it, except what was kind of an overspray from the brown paint. So I'm gonna use copper there. Just gonna put a little bit in. I don't wanna waste this paint. And I could not believe how gorgeous and bright it came out. I thought it would take several coats, but man, you can see here, it really comes on strong. This is a thrifted little tin that I use for my paint. I have lots of those. And then this is a Dollar Tree paintbrush. So I'm just gonna go around the neck and the top part of the bottle and have it kind of feathered down into the brown. So that's what I'm kind of aiming for. I've never used metallic paints like this and certainly not on glass. So I wasn't really sure how it would stick, but it, it really did a good job on this glass. Very happy with this paint. 
And so I'm just kind of flicking it down and trying to give it a decent coverage. Some, some spots look a little bit heavier than others, but I'm okay with that. See the leaf print is so cute. I thought that if we use the brown and the copper, it might actually look kind of like earthenware or like a jar or a jug instead of glass. And I think I accomplished that. You'll see in the end. And you can decide and let me know what you think. Now, I already had all the paints on hand. I just bought the juice for my son. He drank the juice out of it. And then I had the bottle, which was going to be thrown into the trash. So I got to use it. And now it's part of my fall decor, as you'll see shortly. So it took just one coat of paint. And I'm gonna let that dry, and I had lots of things to do, so I let it dry for several hours until I came back down. And it was perfectly dry. No bubbles, no streaks, no scratches. I don't know what I was expecting, but I, I was kind of shocked. It looks really nice to me. And to me, it looks like something that you could buy in a, you know, in like at home store or something like that, especially after I put my little Dollar Tree pick down in it and it really looks nice. I thought that these colors would complement the copper and the brown, so this is the one I chose. Just bending it with my hand and then pinching it with my pliers so that it will fit nicely down into my little vase or my jug. Oop, I lost a berry there. This is how it turned out, and I think it is really nice for what it is. It's just an upcycle, something simple. It didn't take me long to do. It definitely didn't cost a lot of money. And it's pretty. This is easy too. I'm gonna use the craft knife. We're gonna use some type of a base. I'm just gonna use a wood round ornament. I have a square leaf. You can find these about anywhere. And then a little pad of fall paper. I'm looking for a color or a print that I like, and I believe that I will use this grateful sign. Give thanks, Thanksgiving. Yep, this will be a good one for this project. You can also use little fabrics. These are some little vintage fabric pieces or vintage inspired. I'm not sure that they're vintage. This glue stick will work perfectly to put this down. Again, I've said it a billion times. I know I say it a lot. But get all those corners. Get all the edges. You want it to stick down well for you because it's easier to deal with when it comes to cutting it out. And it gives it a better finished look. I'm putting this on at an angle. I'm going to press it down. I'm going to take my wallpaper smoother and smooth it down from the inside outward we want those bubbles to run away from us so we press them to the outside okay now whatever you want to use to cut out you can use to cut out i'm just going to use my little utility knife my craft knife my cutter whatever you want to call it these are not going to be perfect and i am not aiming for perfection because in this project we will be using some sanding to get our edges in the right shape so you can see there's some little excess that didn't come off just like that instead of the sanding block i'm going to use a folded piece of sandpaper because it will get into those cracks and corners and curves a little bit easier so I'm just going to use this to start with, and you can see there that it is sanding it smoothly down. It's taking those little white pieces right off. And by the way, you can paint the edges if you prefer a painted look, but I, I like that it is kind of a raw look. Check this trick out. This is an emery board or a fingernail file. You can use this to get in those tight spaces to really, really work those little pieces out of there okay so once it is done this is how it looks you can mod podge over the type if top if you would like but you don't have to 
And you could also do both sides if you wanted something reversible. So here's an option. I always try to give you an option. You can put this leaf down on the raw wood like this for a rustic look. But if you're going for something a little more cottage core, you can take a piece of this fabric or something that is coordinated but with a vintage sort of look and you could put it down like that. But for my home, I'm gonna leave it a little bit more on the rustic side. So I'm trying to see where I need my glue to go and I'm gonna add it straight on down on my wood round. So this is it so far once the glue is set up and I'm gonna layer one more leaf on top. This is a leaf ornament. This came from the thrift store you can use a regular leaf on top and put a sticker on it, or you can put a sticker right on top of your leaf, whatever you want to do. And I'm just going to add that down. It doesn't fit perfectly like a puzzle piece, but it's close enough. And I'm not looking for perfection. Look at that. Isn't that sweet? Thankful for you. I'm thankful for you. All my subscribers, anybody who watches my videos, every thumbs up, every share, every like, I am very thankful for all of that. I never take it for granted. Okay, so to finish off this little leaf, I'm gonna just use a piece of this cotton twine, make me a tiny little bow, and I'm gonna put that right on that little opening on the top. Do whatever you like with that. What do you think about that? Isn't that All right, I'm gonna start off with some black tags. Almost any place that you get crafts. Mine happen to have come from the from Dirt Cheap, but they were actually originally from Target. You can see the dollar spot tag on the back. So I've got four of those, and I've got this bottle wrapper, a Halloween bottle wrapper that originally came from Target. And I'm going to use the ghost from this to put onto my tags. Now my tags are perforated on the top. You don't have to have them that way. You can get whatever type of a tag you want as long as it'll accommodate the size of the figurine you want to use. You could use witches or pumpkins or whatever you want to use. But today we are using these cute little ghosts. So we're going to cut them out and then trim each one up and find out where they're going to live on our tags. There we go. Now, to reinforce these tags because they're thin, they're not a thick cardstock, go right around the edges and below the line of where it's perforated on the top so it doesn't show through. And I'm going to do that for each one. This is going to make them a little more sturdy. I don't want them to be flimsy. Okay, so I'm using my Dollar Tree glue stick. It's a Jot glue stick. And I'm going to put the reinforcement on the back for each one of these cards. Alright, once that's all done, I'm going to take my, my ghost and glue them on the front. You can use double stick tape or Mod Podge, whatever you want to use, but glue sticks seem to be less messy and they dry quick. I'm just using the end of my wooden ruler just to press it down. Probably not a necessary step, but I just felt like it's a step I needed to take. Okay, now I have to decide which, since they're going to be in pairs, which two would make a good pair. I'm going to use some hot glue. And I'm going to place that down 
right on top of the other one, just overlapping a little where we can still see their faces. And then I'm going to take their strings on the top and tie them together. Although functionally, this is not really doing anything. I just think it, it looks better since they're together. It appears as though they are tied together instead of being glued together. I'm going to do the same thing for the other ones. All right, now we're going to put a decorative bow on the top and we're going to fix these little guys up. I'm going to take some of this pom-pom string or whatever you want to call it, wrap. I'm going to cut them in sections. I'm going to put, tuck up the line there, the straight part, on the back so that you can't see it. And then it will just be the little pom-poms hanging down on the front. And I do that for each one of these. Okay, and then just trim up anything that you see sticking out from the back. Now here's the raffia, 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 whatever you call it. And I'm going to cut four pieces of the black. And then I'm going to be cutting four pieces of the orange. And each bow is going to have two orange and two black. So to keep this kind of simple and farmhouse, I'm just going to tie a simple bow, just a simple bow on the top. I call it a simple bow because it's easy to make, but I don't know if it actually has a name. It's just like a how you tie your shoelaces, that type of a bow. Really easy. And I fluffed out a little bit. No bow goes unfluffed in my house. Not a single one. Even these little ones. You can trim up the tails if you want to. Fluffy fluff. And I'm just placing the bow in the top center of both of them. All right, and I've decided to finish them off. I want to use some type of a little sticker or what have you to embellish the little ghosts. And so these particular ones are. Um, little Halloween sayings, little trendy sayings. And I'm just going to take a couple of different ones that say, I think spooky and Halloween. At the end, you'll see a better, a close up so you can see what it says for sure. But yeah, just some little Halloween sayings. And I'm gonna put one at the bottom of each of these ghosts. And there they are in all their glory. You can hang these off of the strings that are already on them, or you can use, if you want to extend it, you can use a half of a pipe cleaner on each one. Just make a loop, double the ends, and tuck it under so it makes sort of a ring on the top, and then you can hang these wherever you want to. They're also stable enough, since the back has been reinforced, to just stand them or lean them up against something if you wanted to do that. And that's it. Simple as can be. These are adorable. Do you like these? You know, these would be something easy to do with your children, with the grandkids. Just really easy. Let them pick what they want to put on there. They could use stickers even. Thanks for watching. I hope you subscribe and comment below. Tell me what you like about Halloween. And I'll see you real soon. Bye. Welcome back. Now I have nothing against these adorable little pumpkins, but it's not in the color I want, but I love the shape of it. So I'm gonna take this thick yarn that I have. You can use rope of any sort, twine of any sort, but I like this, I got it at Goodwill. I'm gonna dismantle this pumpkin, take the stem off, take the little bag that is around it. Essentially, it's a little bag. Let's save that for something else. And I'm going to make the hole in the top of the pumpkin a little bit deeper so that I can fit the knot of the string down there. 
you'll see it gives it a good starting point. This is a simple process. It takes a lot of glue and a little bit of time. Watch your fingers because you can burn yourself very easily. All right, so I'm going to start off with a knot down in there. And I'm just reloading my glue stick to my pitiful looking glue gun. And we're going to start in a spiral motion going around. Now you'll notice when I twist this, I also twist the rope, the, uh, the yarn in the direction that it is wound. Because if you don't, it'll come unwound. You can see that there. When I don't twist it, it tries to come out of its shape. So I'm going to I'm going to keep putting the glue down and twisting and pressing. I'm going to see a lot of this. Glue, twist, and press. twist, press a carrot, and sometimes there are some cussing and some flinching because the glue is really hot. So we're going to continue all the way down towards the bottom of the pumpkin in this fashion. So I think I've counted two glue sticks so far. And I did not pre-measure the yarn, so I'm not entirely sure how much you're going to need of that. But if you start off with a big spool like this, then I think it's pretty safe to say you'll get the pumpkin wrapped and have some extra. More glue, third stick. Okay, so when you start getting to the bottom here, you're also going to have to add the glue to that row that's right next to it and then butt it up against there. And see how it wants to start pulling down. So in a second here, I'm going to slow it back down and let you see exactly what I'm doing to get those to stay together. There's another, another glue stick if you're counting. Okay, so I'm kind of putting the glue on the foam, also on the piece that is next to it. Twisting it like we did before, pressing it down, pressing it down onto the pumpkin and the row that is right before it. If you don't do this, it's going to come unwound. I'll show you an example of that in just a minute. You still here? If you are, why don't you consider subscribing? Click the little notification bell so you know every time I upload a new video. And give me a thumbs up. Okay, so we're coming to the end here. A little extra glue, a little more pressing. Then I'm just going to trim it off, twist it a little bit tighter, and make sure that I've got good coverage. And press it down in there. And we're just going to trim off the excess. Yeah, 
Yeah, we don't want to cut toward our finger. Cut away, cut away. Okay, so see there how they really weren't connected on the top? I should have been using that same technique before, but you know, you live, you learn. So I just went back in, fixed it, not a big deal. Press those rows together. And then there we have our cute little pumpkin. So now we're just going to choose whatever types of leaves that will fit your decor, whatever you like. Uh, side a little more with rustic. But I'm going a little neutral for you gals who enjoy your neutral decor. And I thought it looked, it looked nice with the cream color yarn. So you know the routine here. We still have that little bit of an indention in the top. You're going to just take your hot glue and put it in there. Add your leaves to it. Whatever type of little stem or extras you want. And that's that. Thanks for watching. Come back and see us real soon. Subscribe so you can see more videos every time they upload. And we'll see you soon. Bye. So I'm starting out with these wood cutouts. They came from uh, Goodwill, I believe. They were definitely thrifted. Any type of scrapbook paper you want to use, if you see here, these are embossed. And I thought these would be nice. But you can use whatever kind you like. This was originally from Target. So I'm going to turn these over and trace them onto the paper. Easy enough. You can do the same thing with the other. I'm going to cut these out carefully. I made sure to push them all the way to the side so I could have some scraps of this paper left so that we can make some leaves. These pumpkins are not perfectly symmetrical and I'm okay with that. Just got to make sure if it's not symmetrical that you're cutting your paper out on the correct side so you get the shape right. I decided to do this two different ways. I'm going to do one of them with a glue gun in case this is the method you want to use to fix it. And then I'll use a glue stick on the other one in case you want to use that one. I will say that these are holding up quite well. So either method works. You could probably use spray adhesive or you could maybe use double stick tape if it's permanent. So here we are with the Elmer's glue stick. But I also use the Jot glue stick and they seem to all work about the same. Okay, so the embossed paper pumpkin, this is the first side. Wanna do a little something farmhousey with the stem. So I'm just gonna use this jute twine, which came from Dollar Tree, and just wrap it around. I want to be sure that it's a solid look, so um, you'll see me take my finger and just press it down kind of firmly next to the next layer. You don't have to do it this way. You can leave some spaces and gaps and make it a little more, uh, I don't know, a little more loosely wrapped if you'd like. And I'm just going to get back around and add a little bit of glue and cut it off or vice versa. Don't forget your little finger protectors here. So they look pretty good so far, right? I think that the embossing and the muted colors and the twine give it a farmhouse look. Okay, so now I'm going to just make a leaf a leaf shape. It's probably not a pumpkin leaf shape, but it's still a leaf and it's going on my pumpkin, so it's a pumpkin leaf. And I'm going to trace that on to the black or hold it on there and cut it out so that they are the same. 
and you can just hot glue those down or use your glue stick whichever way and then I want to put some ribbon on the top these little pieces of ribbon came from the Dollar Tree I was so happy to find these it's just almost like a cotton lacy ribbon really I think pretty and fitting for farmhouse style Just a little shoelace bow, really simple. And then once you get that in the shape that you like and the, the bow fairly symmetrical with the, with the loops and the tails being the right length, you can go ahead and put those down with some glue. Once you get to layering like this, hot glue seems to work better to hold it together. So I've chose hot glue for that. Now I've just got these little chipboard fellas. One scarecrow, one mummy, and that's it. Now for the back. I've taken these envelopes that came with Dollar Tree cards for another project. And because I don't throw anything away, I had these envelopes left. I like this muted orange. So I've chosen to use this for both of this other side of the pumpkin. So I'm just putting the decorative side down because remember my pumpkins are not symmetrical. I want to get the shape right. And I'm just cutting those out. And here's the one with the glue stick. The paper is thin for these envelopes, so I just wanted to be sure and see I had a little slip there, but it went right back over. It's the good thing about a glue stick. You have a little time to move around. And then here is the hot glue. And I'm just using my ruler here to even things out. These came off of a banner from Target. I went ahead and glued the first one down with hot glue and so I'm going to put the word boo on here. I like that it overlaps and it's kind of staggered. I think it's cute like this. And then once it's all down you'll see me use that marker over there. That's a glass marker that came from Dollar Tree. I love it. It's got a long thin almost brush tip and it it has really good coverage really rich dark black so see I'm just filling in those holes and you really honestly cannot see that there's a hole in there at all now so think about that when you see banners and, and things that you could repurpose you can always take them off of your twine and use them for something else okay so I just have some of these I don't know I guess they're 3d glittery pieces of stickers and they came from some scrapbooking stuff that I had years ago but you can use anything like this I think there's some things at Dollar Tree that's similar they might not be 3d but they'll work it's just a variety of swirls and squigglies and hearts and leaves leaves and filigree you just pick what you like and so I've decided to use these another set of stickers I've had for years they came from dirt cheap might have been originally from Target I'm not sure and I just want to use some bats on here to make it appear as if they're the bats have been scared and they're all flying off together so that's what I was going for in this I'm trying to get my pattern straight then I wanted to add some little pumpkins on the bottom. A little hot glue in the middle to hold that one down since it's raised up a little. And then I have this cute ribbon that I got from the thrift store. It's got little ghosts on it and it says boo. I thought this would be the perfect little touch on this side of the pumpkins. So I'm putting them a little bit lower down so when you're using the other side of the pumpkin you don't see it as much. 
Then I'm just going to take my sanding block from Dollar Tree and sand the edges down at an angle and it leaves this finished edge. And I love it. And I think they're precious. All right, guys, I hope you're enjoying the Halloween videos and I hope you come back and subscribe. Be sure to comment if you have any questions below. And thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye. Here we go. I'm going to use my Mod Podge again, the little cup, two little scraps of fabric. They're in fall colors. And then I have two pumpkins that originally came from the Target Dollar Spot or the Bullseye's Playground, whatever it's called. But mine were, these were actually thrifted. They're little chunky pumpkins, but you can use whatever you find. Hey, if you want to show me some love, you can buy me a coffee. See the link in the description box below. A big shout out to Tammy, who is one of my viewers, for the coffee that she got me last week. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love, love, love. Okay, so take that Mod Podge. We're just going to put it all over the top of that pumpkin. Then I'm going to lay down my floral fabric. I think this is very cottage core fabric. It is very 70s, funky. Yes. Gonna add a little extra for the stem. The other pumpkin, I decided to add some of that same oatmeal chalk paint all the way around the edges that were black, just to give it a different look, give you a different idea of how you can do it. You can get pumpkin forms anywhere. You can definitely get them at the Dollar Tree if your tree, you know, if your Dollar Tree carries them. Um, and you can use the ones that are thinner. They don't have to be chunky and thick like these. This is just what I had, so I'm just going to show you. You know, like I've said before, this is for inspiration. So I'm just smoothing it down. And then you'll want to put your second coat on there. I'm going to seal it in. You're going to make this kind of tough. So I'm going all the way around the edges and extending past the edges as well. If you want a more crisp look, go ahead and paint the front of your pumpkin white and that'll really show um, a lot better. But I like the muted look on this. So now this fabric with the Mod Podge is pretty thick and it's easy to cut with a knife. If you know what you're doing and obviously I am still learning. But you go around it with your little knife. Mine came from the Dollar Tree. Or you can use some scissors and these are just cuticle scissors that I use for my little fussy cuts. Go around it like this and take your stuff off. Use regular scissors, use whatever works for you. The idea is to remove the excess. Then I'm going to take a coarse grit sandpaper and just rub the edges smooth. You can see what I'm doing here. You can use an emery board for this as well. You can use your sanding block. Now we're going to do a little embellishment. I think these cute little rustic cottagey pumpkins could use a bow. What do you think? You certainly don't have to put a bow on there. You could do leaves or something like that, but I think little simple bows would do the trick. Sometimes you just need projects that are a little bit simpler looking when you have a lot of florals and other things that get a lot of attention. You don't want too much going on necessarily. I mean, for me anyway. I mean, you do you. However you like it, then that's what you want to do. What brings me joy is what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna try to inspire you to do what brings you joy. So here we go. Our pumpkins are completely dry now, remember that. Add some hot glue, and we're gonna put our long stringy bows on there. I got cotton and jute, and a little bit of orange jute. I think I thrifted the orange, but the other ones came from Dollar Tree. So they have twinsy bows. Very, very simple. It's an easy little project and these would be so adorable to put on a, maybe a tiered tray or at your coffee station. It would be really cute. You could even print off some words or if you have a Cricut, put some words on there. Follow me on my social media on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. I would love to see you there. I'm gonna start off with one of these little shadow boxes. We're gonna use the front side and the back side. Mine is approximately six inches square.
Then I've got some things like a wood burlap covered leaf, a burlap leaf from Dollar Tree, a little applique that came off another Dollar Tree item, and the sunflower. These were coasters that came from Michael's and I just peeled them apart. And then we have some page dividers that I already had. So I'm looking at color combinations to see what I might want to use. All right, so we're gonna get the inner measurements and that's what we're gonna to use to cut the paper that goes on the inside. I'm gonna mark that off, making sure that we don't get the part of the paper that has the holes in it. And then just cut it out and I always cut mine just a little bit on the inside of the line. And it ended up being a perfect fit. Taking just a couple of dots of glue here to stick it down because I want to be able to take this apart and use it again. So this is going to be temporary, not permanent. There we go. Alright, so I just took a bead because there's a hole in the leaf here. I just took a bead and covered that up. You don't have to do that or you could put your bow down further, whatever you want to do there. And I found these little squares at Dollar Tree just going to take the back and glue it on here. A little glue on top. To place it down and it gives it some dimension there. You can see shadows around it and I really like the way that looks. Alright, so the second part. We're going to choose another paper in another color. I like the yellow with the navy blue. And then we're just going to do the measurements of the outside of the box this time. Mark it off and cut it out. You could use double stick tape. You could use anything that you want there. Um, I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue. Like I said, I like to repurpose my items, so I'll take it apart and use it for something else later. You can use double stick tape. You can use a glue stick, whatever you want there. It's kind of thick, so I wouldn't think that Mod Podge would work, but maybe it would. All right, so I decided that I want to do this pumpkin instead of the leaf that I thought I might want to use. And this pumpkin came off of a little, a little organizer thing for fall. And it had two sides and a box in between. And I peeled it off and I've already used the other side. I thought this would be cute because it has the perforations in it and you can see the design of the plaid underneath. This is a piece of the cork that I just cut a leaf out of, this little scrap, and then I'm going to reuse this because I think it looks good with the yellow. And that is that. Two sides there. I hope you would subscribe and share this with your friends. Give it a like if you like the material that we've been putting out, and I'll see you the next time. Bye!